What's going on guys? Zach here from undergroundstrength.tv. Want to bang out a quick Q&A coming to you from the uh, office. And uh, this is a little bit of a long question, but uh, those of you that are serious about strength and conditioning, serious about uh, passing on knowledge, implementing knowledge, this is a good one to pay attention to. So uh, sit back and I'm going to read the question that we got right here. Got a little bit of a background history on this guy and uh, some cool stuff. So let's give it a read here. Uh, Scott says, just wanted to reach out to you very quickly. I feel like I was being talked to on the podcast you did with the Power Athlete crew recently. Um, so those of you guys that don't know that, go on iTunes, check out Power Athlete Radio. That's my second time on that show. Uh, let me see if I can adjust this right here. It says, first of all, I'm a high school teacher with the U.S. government and a former Navy officer. I spent four months in BUDS, but then I left because my wife and I found out we were going to be first-time parents. So congratulations, brother. Uh, while leaving my friends and future teammates, brothers, was incredibly difficult. It was one of the greatest decisions I've made. I was able to move back, and I'm going to keep this a little bit anonymous, to um, XYZ State, that's where I think he's from, and began positively affecting the lives of teenagers in my hometown. A little more about me. I've been training with weights religiously but intelligently since moving home. I was fortunate to become friends with Rich Froning back in 2010, and I became interested in quote-unquote functional fitness. I did some bodybuilding type lifting in college, but the CrossFit wave swept me up, and I eventually ended up now as one of Travis Mash's athletes. Although I don't do CrossFit anymore, I learned a ton from it, most importantly, how to lift correctly, and I got hooked up with some great coaches. In addition to all of that, I've recently been asked to be the head strength coach for my high school's football team. This year, our school hired a new head coach who recognized and even listened to me. <laughs> so that's very rare right there that a football coach wants to listen to an outsider, but it's a great news right there because a coach who cares is going to look for a strength coach um, to team up with them. So this is good, good stuff so far. <clears throat> The team continued to ride the CrossFit wave, and they had our team doing CrossFit-style workouts, and that was all. So I think when people think about CrossFit-style workouts, they think of just light weights, a lot of circuit training, um, and probably not the best of technique if it's you know with high school kids and it's a lot of circuits. Um, and then it says, not surprisingly, they went 2-8 and eight the last two seasons, and they've been 0-6 in our district. Now I've got the team training to get strong, fast, and put on some muscle. Head coach has implemented out of his own pocket a program to feed the players during school and immediately following workouts. It's amazing. I know there's a program out there that puts, um, I think it's called Sherlock Farms, that puts organic chocolate milk um, in the schools. And uh, But I think you know the kids have to pay for it. But it's pretty good. I know Jeff Nichols uses it over at Virginia High Performance. So he says, uh, what should I do to continue? You mentioned that to make a real change with kids, that the uh, coach needs to be in the school. I am in the school. So what kind of things do you suggest I do? What things do you wish you had known as a new strength coach? I know the question isn't very specific, but I wonder what you would do to build a great team if you were in my shoes. Not what kind of workouts, but more general coaching advice. Are there opportunities to get guidance from you as a strength coach? Thanks for the help, Zach. Very respectfully. I'm just going to leave his name out to keep it anonymous. So, um, first of all, really pumped up to have, um, to see somebody doing that kind of commitment and dedication inside of school, not just from yourself, but from your football coach to be able to work with him like that. Now, there's a lot of things that make a, a team great. And I uh, have always shared this story. I wrote about it actually in the Encyclopedia of Underground Strength. And I called it, I think, the Eye of the Tiger. When I was in high school, I remember the football team used to train together all the time. The weight room was extremely small. But the guys were such a band of brothers. They did everything together. So I would walk down the hallway and I would hear Rocky theme song going every day. And you would see a line of like, 12, 15, 20 guys lined up behind the benches doing singles, doubles, triples. The quarterback was benching. He was pressing behind the neck. 
He wasn't worried about his uh, rotator cuff or uh, any of the other any of the other typical things that um, people would be worrying about. After every football game, you could go to McDonald's and there'd be you know seventy something guys in the parking lot. They were all the Edison High School football players. Um, when I was in high school, I remember twice they won the uh, group four sectionals. So that's like the uh, the group, like the county, um, pretty not the county. It's beyond. It's like the big schools. And um, I believe one of the years they were uh, runner runners up. And the year that they were runner up, I recall not seeing all those guys in the weight room, not seeing them doing things together. And I'm going to piggyback on that story when uh, Rob Cole, the head coach of Cornell, um, one of the best teams in the country, <clears throat> he said that uh, the reason why we have a very successful team, you know, aside from recruiting, is he goes, you know, every uh, Friday night is bowling night. We go bowling together. <laughs> every Saturday night is movie night. We watch a movie together. So they're a family. They have built a lifestyle that revolves around training. So they uh, train together, they bleed together, and they're more, much more willing to fight and battle together um, on the wrestling mat and for you on the football field. So the training, it is critical. The training has to be smart. It has to be equal parts physical and mental, not just all the physical. I would definitely have um, at least one day of the week where you guys do some sort of like team challenges, whether it's with body weight work, barbell work, strongman challenges, sprint training, all kinds of things that you could be creative with that get them to work together. So they build trust in one another. So they suffer together. So they earn one another's respect. And don't just pair up, you know, the O-line. Don't, don't just pair up the linemen. Don't just pair up, you know, the runners. Put them all mixed up, all different positions. Mix them up. So they have to learn to carry one another. I'll carry you when it's tougher for you. You carry me when it's tougher. You know, I don't want um, one leader amongst all the people, all the kids on your football team. I want all of them to be leaders. So however big your <clears throat> school is, we don't just want one leader on the freshman team, one leader on the JV team. They must all be leaders because at one time or another, during a game, during practice, we need to be ready to lead. Like the Navy SEALs say, ready to lead, ready to follow, never quit, which is just not having the ego to think that it's always me, it's always about me. So get that stuff into them. A lot of things that I do um, within my gym, both of our locations, is um, I buy books that I want them to read. I gift them the books. We hold competitions. When I was at Lehigh, I remember I gifted a couple of shirts and we held uh, competitions. And I remember the one that was uh, quite a favorite and near and dear to my heart was uh, I said, this month's shirt is going to be, if we all had to go to war, who would I trust to have my back if, if we're going to war? And um, when I awarded the shirts, I remember saying that um, I looked for the guys that showed up early and stayed late. I looked for the guys that were always outworking everybody else, that uh, did the work but weren't you know loud mouths. So people that I knew I could count on when the chips were down. So we used that. So I would definitely implement <clears throat> athlete of the week or beast of the week beast of the month i would uh, get involvement with the school with um cool stuff like have a, a bench off competition or a bench power clean competition but do it in the gymnasium and make it a fundraiser get a dj have music pumping you know get the students it's like a dollar ticket to enter but then sell food on the side and <clears throat> build it into a big community so it's not just the football team it becomes the school is the community around it. Then it becomes the town. So get as much and as many people to support you as possible. Of course, the training is critical, but it's okay when the training is not perfect because what sport and what moment in time is perfect on the football field? It's never perfect. It's always uncertain. There's a you know constant uncertainties going on. So to have the training <clears throat> not be amazing you know, I'm okay with that, but I like what you're doing. You're studying with Travis Mash. You're listening to Power Athlete Radio. Um, getting coaching from me, I've got my last certification in March, um, undergroundstrength.org. If not, get the online uh, certification from us and um, become a member of undergroundstrengthcoach.com. 
and keep keep in touch. I've also got the uh, Train Heroic program, Garage Gym Gladiators. There's a lot of ways that I, I could work with you, but um, I love seeing your passion to help these kids and lucky for you to have the sport coaches supporting you. That stuff's awesome. Thanks. Click the links below for those resources I mentioned and uh, share this video with anybody that you guys think can use it. Good luck to you, coach. Peace.